In the last video, we looked at an example in which it asked us to find where our tangent lines were horizontal. And so we came up with these answers here. In this video, we want to use our graphing calculator to check and to confirm that we have found the right answer. So let's go ahead and do that. I have my original equation typed into my calculator, with the exception of I used x's instead of t's. Notice I put my whole numerator in parentheses and my whole denominator in parentheses, so that way I know my calculator is reading it correctly. Let's go ahead and graph this on the normal window. So zoom 6, that gives us the standard window. And remember, when we're looking for where the tangent line is horizontal, we should be looking for all peak or all valleys. This can also be known as all maximums or all minimums in the graph. Now, the two places that we came up with is at negative 1 and 5. So let's test those. If I type my trace button and I substitute in my negative 1 value, we confirm that we have the right y value of y equals 0. And it also confirms that it looks like a peak here. If I were to try and draw my tangent line with the same slope, my tangent line would be drawn as a horizontal line here. What about the other one? What about when we substitute 5 in? So if we hit 5 and enter, we get this decimal approximation here. Now that's the same decimal approximation as 12 over 13. And if you don't believe me, go ahead and check it by yourself. But Okay. Does this look like a horizontal tangent line? Does this look like a peak or a valley or a max or a min? And the answer might be yes and no. It might look like yes, I do officially have a horizontal tangent line there because my line is officially horizontal there. But it really needs to be a maximum or a minimum at that point, and it really doesn't look like it at this time. So what we need to do is we need to adjust our window around that point so we visually see that we actually have a maximum, or in this case, a low point, a minimum. We can do that manually, or let me try and use a different feature on my calculator called Zoom Box. So if we push the Zoom button, we see option number one is Zoom Box. And so let's go ahead and select that option there. What the zoom box does is it's going to draw a box around what you want to be your new window. So basically, I'm going to move my cursor to the top left corner of where I want my box to be. I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm going to draw my cursor to be the opposite corner, in this case, the bottom right corner, and that will be what my new window is going to be, where I have drawn my box. So once I'm comfortable with the place at the top left corner of the box, I can hit enter. And this can represent any corner. It doesn't have to be the top left. I'm going to draw my box down, and I'm going to draw my box across. So we start to actually see a box here. Remember, we want this focused around the x value of 5, which is around right here. So when I hit enter, this box is going to be my new window that I'm going to see. So I select one corner. I picked the top left, but it can be any corner. I draw it to the opposite diagonal corner, and I hit Enter, and that's going to give me my new window. And so we actually start to see what we're looking for here. You might not realize it yet, but we do. We are looking for peaks or valleys, max or min. And so at this time, we actually do see that our graph does dip down a little bit here. It's not just a straight horizontal line. We can see it goes down to about right here, which is where our x value is 5, and then it starts to go back up. So what we can do is we can again draw another zoom box around this, or let me try and manually adjust it so it makes it a little bit more obvious. If I look at my window and my y, Notice my y min is 0.3 and my y max is 1.8. I'm going to adjust those to be smaller yet. So let me choose my y min to be 0.7 and my y max to be 1.3. And the reason that I'm choosing those is because I know that my minimum should be at 12 over 13, 
which is the decimal approximation of 0.92. So I'm trying to center around that here. So let me graph it and let me see what I come up with now. And so hopefully it's a little bit more obvious that I have a minimum there. But if not, then we can always make it even smaller yet. Let me go really small, really close around my 12 over 13. So that was 0.92. Let me go 0.9 below it. And let me go 0.94 or 95 above it. So I'm really close to my minimum value here. And now since I've gotten so close to that value, it becomes much more obvious that my graph does actually dip down around my y equals 5. And that is this tick mark right here. Now we can clearly see that we have a minimum at 5. And we can push our trace and we can type in our 5 value to confirm that that point right there is our minimum. So it might not have been so visual on our standard window, but since we knew what the answer should look like, we can always do more investigating to confirm that we do, in fact, have a horizontal tangent line there, or a peak or a valley, or a maximum or a minimum. So I want to kind of generalize what just happened there, again, so you can double check these on your own. Now, in this first picture that I have drawn here, this is my graph drawn on my standard window. It is really obvious that I have a horizontal tangent line at negative 1 because I definitely do see a peak there. But it might not be so obvious that I have a horizontal tangent line at 5. Of course, my line looks horizontal there, so that makes sense. But why at 5 in particular? And why don't we have a horizontal tangent line over here on the left part of the graph? Because it also looks like my graph is going horizontal there as well. What's happening is on the left part of my graph, so on my left part of the graph, if I pick it here, he increases all the way through. So my graph is always increasing on that part of the graph. Now the middle part we know very clearly goes from increasing to decreasing, and wherever it switches, that gives us a maximum, or that gives us where a horizontal tangent line is. On the right-hand side of the graph, it might look like my graph is decreasing all the way through, but it's a little bit misleading. What's happening is it actually decreases, but then it starts to increase, but it's very so gradual that we don't even notice. So it actually increases over here on the right. That creates a minimum point somewhere that we cannot see. That minimum point happens to be right here, and when we zoomed in on it, this is the visual that we got. So this is our 5 value, and this is the minimum point that we came up with. So that's why we have horizontal tangent line at negative 1, right here, and at 5, which is right here. And that's why we don't have a horizontal tangent line over here on the left part of the graph. And so now you can see why it's important to do the math behind this first, because our naked eye might not catch all of these maximums and minimums. So that's why the calculus is important, because it catches it before we even start to look at the graph of it. And so now we have fully checked where all of the places where this tangent line is horizontal.